Excuse me, your name? <laughs> you vaguely familiar. Uh, it's J.R. Bob Dobbs. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dave Haley. Somebody brought me macadamia nuts. <laughs> so, uh, this has been really cool. I haven't done this in a long time. Um, I haven't. I don't have multimedia presentations, which is kind of weird, having worked for Scala. <laughs> but um, it, this is this is a really good thing. And I, you know, I'm, you know, when when you're, you know, when you're my age and you've done things throughout your career, you, you know, you look back a little bit. And um, I was, you know, I was talking to RJ about this a little bit the other day, and. Uh, this, this was something that was just, you know, we look back and like, how the hell did we do that? But, um, but you know, I come here and it's like, wow, you know, we, we, you know people, people still remember this. My kids don't know about this in the same way that you guys do. And, um, you know, it's nice because, you know, you know, of all the turmoils that came along with Amigas and everything like that, who owns it this and who owns that, you know, you guys are the people who really own the Amiga because you're keeping it alive. So... Mm -hmm. I thank you for that. Um, get a little choked up. <laughs> this, this really has to be said, you know, I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> I haven't done this in a while, so it's you know I'm a little little rusty speaking in public. Uh, Pretty comfortable, and it, somebody was nice enough to hand me a beer this morning. So. <laughs> um, but um, you know, I, I'm looking at you know, I was looking, I was thinking about like um, all the stuff we did back then, and it's actually kind of hard to find a piece of hardware that has something that we didn't really do, at least try to do back then. Um, a lot of people don't know about some of the stuff we did, but you know, I'll talk. You know, we talk about. You know, we, we had. You know, we had, of course multitasking. We had the we had the blitter. So you know, after Commodore put a blitter in, people really stopped making graphics chips that didn't do hardware acceleration. Um, we had um, auto config. There wasn't a single expansion bus release after Zorro. That didn't also do auto control. You go look at PCI. You look at even even EISO, which was this crazy kludge that they came up with. It was elegant, like Zorro three. <laughs> um, you know, so I mean, you know, all that stuff lives on in little pieces, but you know, they don't all get together except when you're on an Amiga. Um, and I, you know, you look at the other things. I was, you know, I, I ended up doing some stuff in Windows because you kind of had to, and I was getting into video and stuff, and it frustrated me because because Microsoft made you buy a whole new operating system just to like make FireWire work. In fact, I had to do that twice because I bought three times. I bought Windows 98, which promised to make FireWire work, and it didn't. And I bought Windows 98 SE, which promised to make FireWire work, and it really didn't either. And then I had to buy Windows 2000, and then FireWire pretty much worked. Um, look at all the stuff that's being done today with Amigas. The operating system hasn't changed. A lot of you, okay, PowerPC stuff maybe, but your the operating system has barely ever changed in 20 years, and yet you can do all this modern stuff. Um, you know, and that's that's kind of like how I tried to make hardware the same way because uh, I knew that Commodore wasn't going to do what they do today and come out with two new models every year. It was just never going to happen. So the idea was we wanted to make a a platform. Commodore can only do so much. Third parties, which some of you guys you know today it's you know attackers and and makers and people like that making new Commodore stuff. Back then it was you know GBP or or micro, you know, microbotics or something like that making stuff. Um, we couldn't do the whole thing, and it was the same with software. I go to I go to shows, and everyone's like, "Oh, Dave's here. It's great." It's like, "No, I'm here to see what you guys are doing with my shit." You know, it's like, uh, you know, you've got, you know, I make a computer. It's all potential until somebody does something with it, and then I go, I walk around like. 
how did you do that? You know, and you're doing this, you're doing that. And so, I mean, so I was always like one of the most excited people at a show because I had spent two years making this thing that I was like, I'm not, well, it was more like a year, but I'm tired of it. I'm, oh, I don't want to see this. I, you know, I don't look at that schematic one more time. And then I come to, come to a show and it's like, Wow! Look what he did with that. You know, you develop, the developers got triple, you know, d got a double A system, and they're doing something with it, and, and it was just, it was, you know, it was really amazing. So, I mean, and that that I think is one reason why you all are still here because we always looked at Amiga as a community thing. Nobody, you know, because we, you know, as, as talented as everyone on the team was, and I mean, you know, I, you know, I never wanted to hire a person who wasn't better than me if I could. It might be a little hard, but you know, I, I really, I mean, seriously, if I could get somebody better than me and make my job easier, um, you don't find that everywhere. And that's what Com everybody at Commodore is like. Um, everybody at Amigo is like that. You know, and you had to be because you're going to do 15 different jobs. Um, my expression once I got into startup companies was I'm going to probably have to wear every hat that fits. So, um, one of the companies I worked for was a company called Nomadia. And we started out making an RC car controller. And that was pretty cool. It was fun. I liked doing consumer stuff again for a short time. At the end, they were getting out of the hardware business, which wasn't necessarily good for my job prospects. So the last year at that company, I wrote some patents for other people's inventions. I did video, I did animations. I did some video, I did photography for the website, I wrote a song for them, I did some software, some weird um, like web software, stuff I had never done before, but it's like, oh sure, I can, use, I can learn PHP and JavaScript in an afternoon, that won't be a problem. <laughs> um, so every hat that fits, um, but no hat ever fit better than designing computers at Commodore. Um, you know, um, some of the really neat stuff that you guys never got to see was, you know, of course, you know, there was AAA. I'm not sure that people people have probably seen. I tried to post everything I could come up with on AAA. I put out put out documents that I had. Um, Com when Commodore came crashing down, we didn't really plan for the future. It was sort of like there was a combination of panic and despair. <laughs> um, so I didn't archive all the stuff I you know I wish I had. But I had some AAA documents put that out there to say, well, this is what could have been. We had, you know, we had the first 64-bit chipset anywhere outside of the CAD world. I mean, Silicon Graphics probably had stuff like that, but no, nobody in the PC business did. Um, AAA was going to let us build both 30-bit um, systems and 64-bit from the perspective of the graphics chips. Um, we, I had when I, I was building a prototype. There was a prototype called Nix, which there were three of them, and one of them got blown up. <laughs> I'll tell you about that in a second. But um, they were. That was kind of because I got to make a computer. It was using A three thousand technology, but because I got to make a computer, I was going to try every single thing we should have that done. You know that we did wrong in the past. So. We had chip RAM on DIM modules, and so you could upgrade your chip RAM, and it worked with both regular DRAM and VRAM. Nobody uses VRAM anymore, but VRAM was a dual-ported memory. So the graphics, so you know, in a normal Amiga, when you're running graphics, it slows things down a little bit if you run too much graphics. Well, with VRAM, it sucks it out of this extra serial port on the chip, so. You, no matter what graphics you're running, it didn't slow the system down. Um, so that was kind of cool. But it was expensive. So putting it on a DIM module was going to let us do uh, that without making, without necessarily making you buy it when you first bought your machine. We had ROM on a DIM module. Or I think it was a SIM. But anyway, it was a ROM. And I had provisions in there for doing Flash. And this was back in like 1992. Um, when nothing was flash, but I, flash was out, but you needed 12 volts for it, and that's actually that's one one of the motherboards got killed because okay, so this was like this was all done very quickly, and it, it, things were starting to go bad already. So I was rushing, 92, 93, I was rushing to get stuff done, and so I'd have like new circuit boards for my friend Fish every day, 
or not every day, but like once a week or so. And I, so I, because to make this whole system, you had to have, it took a regular CPU module from an A3000, A4000, but we had to have the, the memory modules, we had to have the raw module. When the raw module came back, it was a little bit off in its fitting of the socket, but that's okay. I'm the only one working on the hardware anyway. So one day I wasn't there, and a couple chip guys came up and decided to fire up my system. And the ROM module wasn't plugged in for some reason, so they plugged it in. And unfortunately, they didn't know that you had to push it to an end. So that 12 volts I put in there for, uh, for uh, flash ended up going to the D5 line throughout the entire board, blew the whole thing up. Um, you know, as far as like, you, you have to replace all, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, data, it's the data line, it goes everywhere. <laughs> um, that was a little bit unfortunate. So that's when, when, when we left. There were three a, a, double a, triple A boards. I took one. I took that one and gave the other ones to the chip designers because they had spent, they had been working on it. Triple A was started in 1988, and by 1992, late 92, early 93 is when I first got the chips. Something I could work with, start designing a system, and again, kind of in my spare time. Um, that was that was the real problem. That the commoner was not spending the money they should have. We should have had we should have had double A out in late ninety one, early ninety two. We were we were expecting to be in full production by April of ninety two, but we we might have made we, a lot of that was software. We might have gotten there sooner. Um, we had new we had people came who came in and just dragged foot. They they, they intentionally slowed it down by six months. They didn't believe in Amiga. You know, why were these people even at Commodore? But they didn't. Um, we had we had a project which some people might have heard of called Ombre, that was the next generation of Amiga, because it wasn't really Amiga. It was a new thing. It was it wasn't going to be compatible, um, but it, it did 3D. It had it, we had our own CPU in it. Um, it was going to start out as a game machine. You could have four separate 16-bit play fields. As well as the 3D stuff, it was just it was it was. I mean, we were you know this was going this would have blown away things like the PS2, PS1. It would have, it would have really it really would have really established Commodore in the games world. Plus, we had some interest from some companies, not enough to buy the company out. We had some interest from Philip Packard, who was making chips for us at the time, and using that same technology in workstations. And we were starting to think about that because here's the thing. Commodore was like the last company making really good graphics chips that didn't turn into a graphics company, um, or somebody like Intel or AMD now who build, you know, who sell. Basically, we got graphics got to the point that CPUs were at that it, you know, unless you're very good and very clever, it's hard to sell a million or two or three a year and still make money. Uh, because most of your competitors sell 100 million a year, or if you're ARM, you sell a million a year. <laughs> so, you know, so some of the things that Commodore did would have had to change, but we were still very committed to, you know, I, it was part of my job was seeing the change, and we had other people like, you know, for instance, you know, I was design, I was designing expansion buses, and I actually had this really cool expansion bus for what came after Zora, Zora three. Which was kind of the, solved the same problem that PCI solved, but PCI came out and I looked at it and I said, "We're going to use that because all of a sudden you'll be able to get chips, you'll be able to use like standard stuff off the shelf, you'll be able to get FPGAs that just know about PCI." So, you know, we, you know, we 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 were we were coming up with standards. We weren't like Apple. Apple does stuff just to be different. We were doing stuff because nobody else had thought of it yet, and we weren't going to use the stupid stuff. But once it got smart enough, we were we were well, totally willing to use it. Um, it was, uh, you know. It, it, but the interesting thing about those times, and I sort of, you know, the I sort of feel sad for the industry because there was a time when you could do that, when I could say, "No, that sucks. That sucks. I'm going to do it this way because it needs to be done that way." And you know, at Commodore, it was an individual's decision. It was up to me to say, we should invent a new expansion bus. But I want to keep it compatible because I know there's all these people out there who've got Zorro 2 who want to be able to plug their their new their old cards into the new thing. Um, you 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 could you know we did we did you know we did a bunch of things in software as well. We did things that 
needed to be done that way, when there was a standard, we could use it. Um, we weren't afraid of that. In fact, it made our lives easier, and it made everyone else's lives easier because they, you know, it's something standard. I mean, we we definitely would have done USB. We definitely would have done PCI. Um, we probably would have been an early adopter of FireWire because we had all these video people doing stuff in, you know, in the United States. Um, and you know, and it's interesting that all that stuff today works on an Amiga somewhere. I, like I said, I, I you know I didn't have I didn't have a huge plan about what I was going to talk about, but um, <laughs> yeah, you're la the last person I'd like to interrupt. Okay, but we're doing Q and A. Oh, you? Well, later on. Later on, we're doing Q and A. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. What? Now we have Carl. Carl's coming up. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> Carl. Don't worry, he's, he's going to talk some more, and he's, he's here to ask your personal questions. The next up is called Sassan Roth.